Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning. The flowers today are presented to the glory of God and in loving memory of H.L. Buddy Robbins by Betty Robbins. Congratulations to Charlie Sapp and Emily Hooker who were married yesterday. Applications for the Julianne Trogdon Scholarship are due today. If you plan to apply and have not turned it in yet, you can leave it in the bin outside the office or email it to the office today. Anyone who has signed up for the 250th Anniversary Committee or those who want to be on the committee are asked to attend a meeting after the worship service on Sunday, April the 28th in the Fellowship Hall. Crisis Control is collecting pancake mix and syrup this month. If you would like to help, you can bring some to the church by Sunday, April the 28th, and we will make sure it gets delivered. Thank you to everyone who came and helped with the Women's Fellowship Breakfast Retreat yesterday. Dear Freeland family, thank you for surrounding our family with love and prayers during my mother's passing whether it has been through words, cards, or hugs. Church family support is so special, and my family and I felt the prayer support from our church and my mother's church. We will always remember your expression of love and support. In Christian love, Diane Gordon and family. Judith McPherson entered into the more immediate presence of the Lord on April the 17th. The visitation will be at 1 p.m., and the memorial service will be at 2 p.m. here at Freeland on Friday, April the 26th. Please keep Ron and the McPherson family in your prayers for peace and comfort during their time of loss. Let us pray. Dear Father, Lord of peace and justice, give unto us your peace. Guide us with your pure and peaceful wisdom that we may walk humbly in your spirit and spread your peace. Peace in our homes, in our families, in our church, in our community, and in all the world. Dear Lord, as we walk in this world, we recognize we are all different in many ways, but we know that we have far more in common because we are all part of your creation. We pray that you will keep our hearts and our minds open to find those similarities and to treasure the different gifts we all have so that we may live in peace in your kingdom. And when we find ourselves in opposition, we pray that we will keep our focus on you, our shelter from the storm, so that our words are not spoken in anger. We pray that we remain steadfast in the scripture and your word so that in all we do and say, we work for peace and justice according to your divine word. These things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Please turn in your hymnal to page 566 and stand as we sing, O Worship the King.
Please remain standing and turn to page 148 in your hymnal as we pray the liturgy for peace and justice. How should we come before the Holy One and bow before God on high? God has shown what is good and what is required to do justice, to show constant love, and to walk humbly with our God. give thanks to you, O God, for you are good, for your steadfast love endures forever. We can, who can utter your mighty works or show forth all your praise? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Is not this the kind of worship that pleases me, says our God? to undo the bonds of injustice, to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke, to share bread with the hungry and shelter the homeless poor, to clothe the naked and not turn from your own people. I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me drink, a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me, sick or in prison and you visited me. When did we see you hungry and feed you, thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and visit you? Truly I say to you, when you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. Please be seated. If you do away with the yoke, the clenched fist, the wicked word, if you give your bread to the hungry and relief to the oppressed, then your light will rise like the dawn, your goodness will go before you, and the glory of God behind you. God has shown us what is good and what is required to do justice, to show constant love and to walk humbly with our God. As we consider these things, let us confess our sins in silence.
the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Jesus said, You have heard it said, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with your neighbor, you will be liable to judgment. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Praise God, all you nations. Praise, Praise God, God, all you people. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. There will be one who will rule with integrity and govern with justice. One who will be like a shelter from the wind and a place to hide from the storm. One who will be like streams flowing in a desert, like the shadow of a giant rock in a barren land one whose eyes and ears will be open to the needs of the people. Our God says, Here is my servant, whom I strengthen, the one I have chosen, with whom I am pleased. I have filled him with my spirit, and he will bring justice to every nation. He will not lose hope or courage. He will establish justice on the earth. He will teach us what he wants us to do. He will walk in the paths he has chosen. He will settle disputes among the nations. He will arbitrate for many peoples. We will beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation. Neither will they learn war anymore. We will live in peace, and no one will make us.
us a prey. Justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And the effect of righteousness will be peace. And the result of righteousness will be quietness and trust forever. And we will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. We will live in peace, and no one will make us afraid. Please stand. God has shown us what is good and what is required. To do justice, to show constant love, and to walk humbly with our God. Our first scripture passage comes to us today from Psalm 23, found on page 392 in your pew Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading comes from 1 John 3, 16 through 24, found on page 863 in your pew Bible. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. We call our children forward for our children's message.
Everybody welcome. How's everybody doing? Maybe you've seen one of these before. Have you seen this before? It's called the Shepherd's Staff. So we're going to have a staff meeting here today. The Shepherd's Staff, you know, is a long stick. It has a hook on the end, the hook up there. It's very special to shepherds. Shepherds would use these and still use these in many ways to help those who need it the most. They help out for our sheep. The good shepherd, as Jesus says today in our scripture today, it talks about how Jesus says he's the good shepherd who will watch over the sheep and take care of them. And just like a shepherd's staff is used, Jesus takes care of us also, each and every one of us. Imagine you're one of the sheep of the flock. I might need a volunteer, like say, William. That's not bad. <laughs> not a bad job. But sheep, what do sheep do? Sheep wander. They wander around. You can keep on wandering. That's a, doing a great job. Sheep wander. They go off on their own. They go in all different directions. And sheep sometimes get lost as they stray, as they go around. So the shepherd helped having the staff here. And so sheep... Sheep William, so he would take the staff and gently, try not to injure the sheep, bring the sheep back to where the sheep needs to be. And that's perfect, okay. Good job. Thank you, William. That's really how it works. The staff was used to bring the sheep back when they would go astray like that. That's what Jesus does for us. Christ will use his love and kindness to guide us, just like a shepherd might use a staff to bring back and to guide and to lead the sheep. When we feel lost or afraid, we know Jesus is there to guide us back to safety, now and always. Jesus loves us, each and every one of us, all of us, so much that Jesus gave up his life for us. So whenever you see a shepherd's staff like this, whenever you see these, through our Christmas plays or other times during the year, you can remember that Jesus loves us and is our good shepherd. And he's always looking out for us to guide us, to protect us, and to help us, and to bring us back. We can thank Jesus for his love and protection, and we can do our best to follow our Lord wherever he leads us. And let's pray. We thank you, O Jesus, for being our good shepherd, always with us, guiding us with your love. We pray you would always find us when we wander and bring us back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Remember, as with each Sunday, we're able to receive our offering online through the link on our website. And all are invited today to place your offering while you're here in the box at the back of the sanctuary. Let us give thanks for God's gracious love and draw near to God in praise and thanksgiving. And let us pray. O holy God, shepherd of our souls, abundantly you give to us blessings, both spiritual and material. According to what you have given, help us to give so that the work of your Son might be advanced in our world and your name might be praised and glorified by all people. May you accept and bless these gifts we bring, the offerings from our hands and the offerings we make within our hearts. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
I invite you to remain standing for our following hymn, hymn 662, Jesus Makes My Heart Rejoice. our gospel reading for this Sunday from the Gospel of John from chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. As Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them up and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, for this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. I read one time about butterflies about butterflies and how the process is long, how it's difficult for a caterpillar to become a butterfly. Many of us have seen this, or we've known about this, how a caterpillar will stuff itself with leaves and grow and grow, grow larger and grow longer as it sheds its skin. And then one day the caterpillar stops eating, will hang upside down from a twig or a leaf, and then spin itself a silky cocoon or mold into a shiny chrysalis. Within that protection, inside of that casing, the caterpillar begins to change. It radically transforms its body, eventually coming out and emerging as a butterfly or as a moth. The caterpillar really has to destroy itself with enzymes, enzymes released to disintegrate most of its body to move forward in the cocoon or chrysalis before all of this change and transformation is complete. The caterpillar lays down its life in what seems to be an act of self-destruction. For the caterpillar here, laying down that life brings the possibility 
of becoming a butterfly. It's a delicate balance going on here through all of this process. It's delicate balance for a delicate creation, and there's risk involved here. With too much of this enzyme, the caterpillar turns to mush and then disintegrates. If there's too little of it, it will never reach its full potential. At the start, the process seems to be completely destructive and agonizing. The most transformative part here of the metamorphosis occurs, hidden from our view, as this new creation appears to be entombed. What emerges then, what comes out, is truly miraculous. It's truly a miracle here, rooted in what came before, containing all the same elements, but yet there's a change, a glorious change. The butterfly cannot come to life unless the caterpillar faces its own end. It lays it down in order to pick it up. We don't really know if Jesus ever used this metaphor here of a butterfly to explain his death or resurrection, but he does use all kinds of metaphors and images, expressions to help the disciples understand the nature of his life and death and resurrection and the new life that he came to bring. Maybe no other image is used by Jesus as much as this image today of the shepherd. In Jesus' time, a shepherd would have been a very common, fairly common occupation. We read about sheep and about shepherds throughout Scripture, especially throughout the Psalms and Ezekiel and Isaiah, to name a few. When it comes to sheep, in reality, they are complex creatures, somewhat intelligent. They're emotional creatures. Sheep will recognize each other. They recognize human beings. They display anger and fear, loneliness and grief, as well as happiness and attachment. We are told they build friendships. They stick up for one another in fights. They feel sad when their friends are gone, even gone to the slaughter. Sheep are gentle, they're relational, easily domesticated, but they can also stray from the flock. They're not made to be hunters, which makes them easy prey for more aggressive animals, which means they might need to be retrieved and brought back from harm and protected from all those predators. And there was a risk in being a shepherd in Jesus' day. Yet the early shepherds were not usually expected to die in the line of duty. Still, here Jesus says he is the good shepherd who risks his life for the sheep. He lays down his life for the sheep. There's a 19th century Princeton theologian named Benjamin Breckenridge Warfield who wrote that in Jesus Christ, God was saving the world and not merely one individual here and there out of the world. In Christ, God came as a shepherd to the sheep. Sheep being plural here, all the sheep, all of us. And for us, although it's possible to encounter Jesus, to know Christ anywhere, Scripture tells us time and again, Scripture emphasizes that this encounter is most likely to happen in a place where people are gathered. People gathered like sheep in a sheepfold are those most likely to encounter the shepherd. People gathered like sheep in a sheepfold can be shepherded, brought together in times when they need warmth or dryness, like maybe today, and the safety of life together, all of us. In a book called Approved Practices in Sheep Production, it says that in caring for the sheep, most important is that continuous attention is required. Sheep are often quite helpless. They fall easy prey to predators, especially dogs and coyotes foxes, bobcats, and even eagles. They might fall prey to hazards such as a picket fence or a woven wire fence or to ditches and gullies where they might find themselves lying down and suffocating unless help comes pretty quickly. Parasites and diseases are also ever present as problems to guard against. The book says that sheep have a great deal of problems Sheep have all kinds of problems. 
And well, so do we, all of us. Sheep face all kinds of dangers, and so do we. Sheep are best tended together, and the Bible says, so are we also. If you look around throughout our faith, too often in many churches, there might be an emphasis placed on knowing Christ and really not enough on how he knows us. A lot of emphasis and stress placed on what it is that we might need to do, what we should be or not do if we are to be his disciples, and not enough stress placed on the miracle of what it is that God does for us if we but simply trust in our God and listen for God's voice. There are churches which focus primarily on how we must care for the world, be concerned for the environment. We must be involved in caring for refugees, strive to feed the hungry and clothe the naked, bring justice to the poor. And all of that is important. All of that is true. We're often told what we can do for the whole world, but not so much what God wants to do for us. And there are churches that focus continually on giving to the church, that those who are dedicated, truly dedicated, will go to all kinds of meetings. Those who are devoted to Christ will read the Bible so much, so much amount each day, will be involved in all kinds of aspects of the life of the church as leaders or helpers or participants. Often people are told what a good Christian does for the church, and it's suggested or even implied that God does nothing for us if we don't do these things. In so many places, we're continually told over and over again what we must do or what it is that we should do. While there's value in all of this, value in much of what we are told, when it happens, the danger is that the good news of our faith, the gospel, can be lost. We miss the point of the gospel whenever our, our actions are emphasized and the love, the intercession of our God and our lives is ignored or downplayed. We miss the point whenever the salvation of those around us, our salvation and the salvation of the world is linked to our activity, to what we do or think or feel, instead of being linked to what God does, the activity of God, and what God does and feels and does for us. There are many obstacles for us. There are many dangers throughout our lives. There are many drains in our energy, time commitments we have, many things that challenge us. And alone, on our own, we can be overwhelmed by them. But the good news is that we are not alone. There is one who watches over us and gives us the strength and the protection that we need. Jesus tells us, the 23rd Psalm tells us, that it is God walking with us who overcomes that which is overwhelming. It is Christ who heals us, who saves us, and not any one of us. It is the good shepherd who brings comfort to the flock and not the sheep over which he watches. We are called in our lives to do many things. All these things can overwhelm us if we do not stay anchored to that rock which cannot move. And our helping others can exhaust us if we do not remain attached to the one who can help us, the one who is there for us. And yet the amazing thing is that even when we do not stay attached to the one who helps us, even when we go about our daily lives and fail to keep in touch with God, even when we wander like sheep, and even, you might say, even when we fail to know God, God continues to know us, to search for us, to reach out to us, so that God can give to us what we need, what we need to be given. Throughout our scriptures, this truth is expressed through the simple but important image, the image of God as our shepherd. Remember the old bumper sticker that says, the family that prays together stays together. And that goes for all of us as well as the family of God. And unless we pray together, 
unless we study and seek God's will and the word of God together, unless we share good news during good times and bad times together, we will suffer the same fate that comes upon those who stay apart. We will be alone. Ultimately, we might lose our sense of direction, our sense of purpose, and even our faith. Sheep are known at times to put their head down as they eat, wander as they eat. Even if the shepherd does not pay attention, a sheep can wander far away, far from the flock, and far into danger. Remember, though, how the early church survived and prospered because the people within it committed themselves to one another and to the Lord who brought them together as sheep in a sheepfold. The early church grew and spread far and wide because those who believed gathered in God's presence. They prayed for God's will to be done in their midst, not just one day a week, but each and every day. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's easy for us to stray, to wander. It's easy to need help. And today the voice of the shepherd calls to us, it calls across the years, leading us and guiding us and showing us the way. Today the gatekeeper comes and opens the way to the green pastures of God's love. Today the gate itself swings wide and calls us to enter that community of our Lord's faithful people. May all praise be to the Good Shepherd, the way and the door, the resurrection and the life, both now, both today, and always. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and forgiving God, we thank you that when we wander, you seek us out, that when we stumble and fall, you lift us up, and that when we falter or begin to get lost, you call us by name. Help us, dear Lord, to remain close by you, to keep your presence before our eyes and to hold your word within our hearts. Help us to renew our strength in you. In Jesus' name, hear our prayer. Amen. And our closing hymn today is hymn 593, How Great the Bliss to Be a Sheep of Jesus. And let's stand as we sing.
And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always.